getting ready to start my day. They're actually over at my ex's today, because the holiday was last week. So she actually had them last night. Again, the elder child protested vehemently. And all I can really do is make sure the ex knows how much they don't want to be there. But I don't want to waste a lot of breath and energy talking about my ex. I don't have a choice in the matter, because when you spend that many years living with someone that abusive, it's really fucking hard to avoid. It's really fucking hard. I'm watching where I walk. There's dog toys everywhere. It's really fucking hard to avoid. There are people I've spoken to, both professionals and non-professionals, because I've been in therapy most of my life, believe it or not. I'm a strong proponent of therapy. I think it's good for everyone, from the professionals themselves down to the absolute everyone, who have said to me, well, you know, maybe if you just stop talking about it, maybe if you could just let it go, maybe if you just try to think about other things, focus on other things, do other things, fucker, if I could, I would. Okay? You literally cannot heal from shit that you're in the middle of. This is the most straightforward analogy. You cut yourself, whether it's literally self-harm or a genuine injury from outside sources, okay? And this is, this is someone who used to engage in self-harm. I am not encouraging people to harm themselves. I am using it as part of my analogy. You end up with a wound on your body, a big one, like, I need stitches, until it is stitched, until sufficient days and or weeks with sufficient bandage changes occur, that cut will not be healed. By definition of any medical professional, the wound will remain. It'll either remain, it'll remain open, it'll remain in the process of healing, and even healed, there will be a scar. Even if it's immediately stitched. Even if it's still, still processed in the most completely clean hospital, as fast as humanly possible, if it is done in the most expert way, with the most beautiful surgical stitches, the human body will create scar tissue. Okay, one of my children, last summer, had to get stitches here. Because Fucknut decided to send them into a room when I wasn't available to supervise them, knowing I wasn't available to supervise them, and shit happened. Inside 15 minutes, my child was in an ambulance on their way to a hospital. And by the end of the day, home properly stitched by a medical professional. There is a scar. I have to repeatedly explain. As a trauma survivor, as someone who is doing my damnedest to heal from this bullshit because my bullshit is not just my ex. I don't believe it is just my ex. I have never claimed it is just my ex. That's the most recent because it was a solid 14 fucking years of my existence, but it's not just that it's, it's not just that relationship. Okay. No. When you are in the middle of experiencing a harmful act. It is inconceivable that it will heal, that it will end, that this pain and hurt and harm will ever be done. And for someone to repeatedly tell the person experiencing that pain, just don't think about it. Just let it go. Just focus on something else. Fucker. If you knew 
what that person was going through. I gotta tell you, side tangent, when I found out that the word of the year for 2022 for Merriam-Webster was gaslighting, the very, very distinct sense of vindication and validation I felt, I don't think I have enough words to describe. I, I really don't, because I have been making the case about them doing that to me for so long, to such a degree, for everyone to tell me, oh, I don't think so, well, I, you know, you might really be misusing that word, I don't think that's really quite what it is. Mm, really? You really think, I'm not smart enough to look up a word, you really think... I'm not smart enough to know what's coming out of my mouth. I am autistic. Hyperfocus and deep dive is genuinely one of our special capacity abilities, okay? I grew up in a trauma environment, particularly specializing in psychological and emotional trauma. My mother was a fucking demon, okay? She herself had her own trauma. It's generational. No lies, no shade. It was what it was. That part I've been working on moving on from. Still my whole life. Still working on it. I, you know, I have kids. So I'm going to have to work on it because they don't deserve to deal with that. But that said, acting like I don't know what I'm talking about when I fucking lived it already. <laughs> Moreover... I make a point of not talking about how smart I am for a number of significant reasons. One, I live in a female body. No one will take me seriously. That's society. End of sentence. Any person living in a female body, prove me wrong. Not tell me I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Can't be done. Not in my experience. Next up, I have naturally blonde hair and glasses. People lose their fucking capacity when they get caught in between, do I tell a blonde joke or do I make an egghead joke? Do I tell a blonde joke or do I make an egghead joke? Well, which is it? Do you think I'm an airhead or do you think I'm a brainiac? Because those are diametrically opposed. Oh, right. I made this six hours ago. <laughs> forgot what time it was. Oh, the dog woke me up at 2 a.m. throwing up. <clears throat> That's when I made my coffee. <clears throat> I wonder it tastes like that. Anyway. So. What's going on with it? So people get genuinely stuck. In this absolute brain fart of a position of like, what joke do I make? What joke do I make? What joke do I make? So I don't talk about my intelligence. I know it. The people who have tested me know it. But <laughs> I literally can't brag. I literally can't brag. Because the moment I talk about what I'm capable of, 15 pounds of chauvinism and misogyny and societal pressure bashes me on the head and does its level best to break my spine in half. I'll tell you what, I have a degenerative spinal condition. Don't need the fucking help! And this is one of the side effects of trauma. You start, maybe it's also neurodivergence, but you start on one thing and you rapidly jump tracks. And it's not even altogether intentional. There's just so much that you honestly can't help the ping pong. You, you don't... You're trying... You got your crocky toy? Happy dog? That's what the squeaking is. It's the youngest dog with his squeaky croc. <laughs> um, you just... You can't. So much wants to come out. So much feels the need to come out. And there's no easy way to deal with it. 
so I'm starting my day. <laughs> that was 10 minutes, I apologize. I'm starting my day. And my day is basically filled with momming. Because my hands are unobstructed insofar as the kids are with the ex. And even when I have these full days of my hands are technically unobstructed, it's, you know, it's a 12, 15, 18 hour day depending on when I wake up and it's still not enough time because I'm one adult human. You know, I don't think that would be enough hours in a day for one adult human who genuinely was in good, altogether functional health. I'm one adult human who's in hardly functional health. So, and quite frankly, I'm still pissed off from last week. Not at my ex for going to New York because fuck her. She's going to run away. It's all, it's all they know how to do. But the father-in-law, I am, I am genuinely pissed. Whenever people who know nothing run and tout and spout their mouth off, the anger, you know, and then I have a written blog which I started not too long ago, probably within the last year. And I got shit from my ex about it, well, from their attorney, about me venting online and sharing certain things. And it's like, you know what? A, it's called free speech. Odd thing for a lawyer not to understand. And B, please, please, I beg you, make a case out of it. Make it a case of credibility. Because I have receipts. And you know what? The second I made that point, my ex and their attorney stopped saying anything. And this is part of the reason I felt so validated. That gaslighting was the word of the year. Because you call them out on this shit with proof. With evidence of repercussions. I mean, it's a divorce. Lawyers are involved. To say nothing of anyone else of any professional grade in any professional format. The moment you say to them, Really? Would you like this 15 chapter tome of receipts that I have? Would you like this three folio folder of screenshots? Would you like this living human witness who's already given statements? Would you like the testimony of the person you cheated with? I can provide them all. Calm as water, clear as a sunny day. They'll fight you at one, maybe they'll protest at two. At three, they get angry and start saying, Well, what about what you've done? Please, show me. Please, tell me. Please. In the same orders of magnitude, in the same ways that I am providing and producing for you freely of my own accord at no one's behest with no subpoena or deposition necessary, tell me what I've done wrong. And they fold faster than a house of paper towels. Under a speck of rain. Now, in some situations, it's equal. Sometimes a narcissist will be with a narcissist. Sometimes bad just meets up with bad. It happens. In my situation, that's not the case. Now... I have said repeatedly, I have the capacity 
to be a bad person. I'm a human being. Of course I have the capacity to be a bad person. That's not the issue. The issue is accountability. The issue is severity. Okay? Now, on the point of severity, no one matches my ex. Flatly. I mean, they're... Again, it's it's a legal thing where, like, I can't say certain stuff, but the evidence is there. So, I'm stuck in the position of being like, well, if you want to demonstrate that I'm as bad or worse, please demonstrate it. Because what you're going to find at every turn is matching. What you did to me, I reflected back. And you know what every professional psychologist and psychiatrist will tell you? Duh. She's autistic. That's called masking. Duh. She's a trauma survivor. She was going through trauma with you. In the same information provided to demonstrate you think I'm the bad guy, you have to demonstrate what you did wrong. And that's why often, and I know particularly with my ex, it'll never get that far. Because every time it comes up, the response is, I just want to forget about it. I don't even want to think about it. I just want to let the past go. I destroyed the evidence I had because I didn't think it was best for you to see it. I'm sorry, when did I stop being a grown-ass adult who could make my own fucking decisions? Well, I just didn't want to think about it anymore, and I just wanted to let the past go, and if you'd seen it, you'd have divorced me anyway. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So, first of all, you know you're not telling me everything, and you know the severity of what you did. This is how the trauma is ongoing. So when outside people are telling me, just let it go. Just don't think about it. Focus on something else. How? I have a person who is admitting to me in subtle and overt ways that there are still secrets. That there are still hidden landmines that I don't know about with people I don't know who have been involved and brought into my life and my children's lives behind my back for extended periods of time, worse, over the internet, because of the multitude of shady shit my ex chose to do. There is not a point where someone who has been subjected to that list of things and I have still not given a full list of what my ex has done to me. There are key words and aspects I am leaving out because of legal issues. There is no way to appropriately move on from that trauma when it is still ongoing. As long as I still have no choice but to deal with this abusive, secretive, non-communicative person, the trauma still exists. The trauma is still ongoing. And we live in a world with a whole lot of systems, sorry, momming, that encourage most victims, and I'm not putting a gender cap on that, it is disproportionately women, but I'm not putting a gender cap on that, victims to deal with their abusers and go through programs throughout the court system that to the face of the victim invalidate, denigrate, dismiss, and still you have to do it. Still you have to participate because everything is based on surface. Everything is based on good faith effort. Not all violence is physical. What I want, and I can only speak for me, and I can only assume the magnitudes of other people who would agree with this point, what I want out of federal law 
if I had my druthers, would be the necessary ability to litigate based on demonstrating emotional abuse, psychological abuse. The same way that we make people go through rigors to demonstrate that they have consulted with psychiatric professionals for other things, whether or not in those other categories that rigor is called for, there is logic to having a psychological professional on board to demonstrate the validity of what case you're presenting. In the case of emotional, psychological, intensive harm, I would so, so be overjoyed for there to be federal law instead of state-to-state -state bullshit that doesn't recognize this and doesn't give full weight to that. Federal law that once you meet criteria A, if you can actually prove criteria B, like have these demonstrated things like audio evidence, video evidence, medical reports, be they psychological or medical from a hospital or doctor's reports, whatever. Once you can codify that as to what you present for the basis of a case of charges, I want there to be federal law for what that leads to for punishment. And I don't mean penalty. Because that means it's legal if you can afford it. I mean punishment. Now, are there going to be situations where penalty is going to have to be the resolution? Yes, because we still live in capitalism. There's going to be people who pay their way out of it. And that fucking sucks. And that's reality. And I don't want that to be reality, but <laughs> my eyes work. My druthers... It would be punishment. There would literally be a set of, like, class A's and class B's and class C's. There would be time involved. And whether or not that time involved being in a situation where you had to learn about the effect your treatment had on the other person while getting psychiatric treatment yourself... Because clearly something's wrong with you if you're going to fuck somebody else up that bad. Or, in the more extreme cases, literal prison. Just prison is what prison is. And until we reform prison, you go into that system. We should reform prison. It's, it's legalized slavery. That's all it is. But until we fix that too, there's so much to do. For me, for my situation, for what I have to deal with, if I had my druthers, if I had my way. That's my argument. That's what I present to you. I, I, you know, because at this point, much of the law is subject to who can afford it. There are public defenders when it comes to criminal cases, and all of those departments are underfunded. But when it comes to things like civil law, everything is about who can afford the better attorney. And oftentimes it's not even about who can afford the better attorney. It's about who can afford the better firm. Because if you have more people working on a case, you get more done faster. And you literally overwhelm the other side. It becomes a race akin to a sports field and not about the actual law. And that's not even before you get into the politics of what law can be. And it pisses me off. And that is in no way some backhanded statement about my attorney or my ex's attorney or divorces in general. That's genuinely about the system at large because I had parents who separated. I've seen other people go through divorce. The whole of the entirety of the American system Fucked. 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 You can't slice it any way that isn't fucked. You just can't.
you know? I want there to be more people in the legal profession. I want there to be more teachers. I want there to be more people available. We have such an overpopulation issue as a planet. Most of the things that need help, most of the problems that need solving, we literally have the manpower for. We have enough human beings to stockpile the legal system. We have enough human beings to overwhelm every school district with qualified educators. You know what we don't have? The educational system in place to support them learning those skills. Because people are too concerned with the tuition cost of giving them those skills. And this is why the rest of the world has it right. You make education free. You support people during the learning process. Yes, eventually they're going to have to get paid. They're going to have to get jobs. They're going to have to earn their place in their society, in their community. But the further and further we've gotten away from the standpoint of we are a community, it takes a village to survive, genuinely the worse off the entire species has gotten. And personally, I think that's part of how so much of humanity has denigrated to the point of psychological abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, the separation from each other. Because if you look, there are, there are places in the world, there are portions of the world, countries, nations, where this is not the case, where they either did not really stray from that or they have made severely concentrated efforts to get back to that and it has done what we would interpret as miraculous wonders for the population. This is why I hold hope for Gen Z. This is why I hold hope for Gen Alpha. This is why boomers are pissed. This is why the silent generation is pissed. They were part of the end tail of the generations who worked hard to make money the priority. Because at that point, there wasn't the technology to support what they knew communities to be. I think that's where a lot of disconnect comes for a lot of people. At that point in time, you're talking late 1880s, 90s, through the 1900s, up until like, what, the 1970s? For that century thereabouts, the technology was developing rapidly, but it wasn't at the point that supporting and sustaining community for the sake of community was viable. Technology and its rapid development was sustainable only if you could get people invested and only, only profit would get people interested at that point. That's not true now. Now, technology has reached enough of a peak. I don't think it's peaked. Enough of a peak. Enough universality, enough diversification that it can be used for community building and sustainment while it becomes used and utilized for the other aspects of life we need. Dealing with global warming, dealing with poverty across the board, dealing with, quite frankly, undoing the massive amounts of harm we did in the initial pursuit of capitalism. 
undoing the harm transportation has caused. Now that we know, now that we know better, we can find the necessary ways and alternatives to keep trains, to keep cars, to keep airplanes without mining the ever-loving crap out of what resources we might have left. No, it's not going to happen tomorrow. No, it's not going to happen in the next five years. But so help me God, if it doesn't start becoming the focus within the next couple of years, the odds of it being completely gone inside of the next go way the fuck up. If you've managed to watch through this whole half hour, thank you. If you haven't, I don't blame you. But this is how the start of a day for a trauma survivor goes. It is a ramble that jumps from what I've been through to what I would hope for to the need for vindication and validation and there's got to be a way to fix it to there's got to be a way to punish the guilty to but I'm still a parent and I really want the world to be better to tears because when you stop and think about all of that in succession literally all of the overwhelm hits you at once Because the second you stop talking, you start feeling. <laughs> That's also a neurodivergent thing. <laughs> you keep the TV on, you keep the radio on, you keep something on. So telling me, do something else, focus on something else, but I fucking am. I'm, I'm autistic and I have ADHD. I'm always in the middle of doing five other things. If that was going to help, it would have helped by now. There's, I don't know how to let it go. I don't know how to not live with what I still have to live with every day. I don't know how to let go of being hurt as much and as bad as I have been because I've literally never experienced anything else. Hey, Mary. Come here. Come here. No? Cuddles? Come here. Your mom's had a kiss? No. Okay. No, my belly's over here. Come to my belly. What about Loco? Loco! Here's my kissy face! Oh, now you get up? You don't want your brother to get all the kisses? Hi! Yes. Hi. Thank you for coming, my kissy boy. Come here, kissy boy. why a lot of us have animals or do things with animals or nature I think animals give us trust and they give us love they give us no judgment I've had animals my whole life I never had a dog though until Rizzo was asleep in my beanbag chair Rizzo there was my first pup And then came Loki, my kissy boy. Hey, the kissy boy. And this is baby Erebus. Erebus is actually a service dog. We're still working on training. But he loves his big brother. <laughs> you jealous? Your brother came for kisses and you couldn't have dad? Hey, the kissy boy. What? Literally whacking me on a paw. No, you deny it. You deny it. 
just choking up the mommy love. You're just choking up the mommy love on the camera. Hi. Hi. What are you doing? You want some? Kissy boy. You want some too, Rizzo? I'm nervous. So jealous. Alright. It's it's like instantaneous. Just cuddling with my pack of dogs. I start to feel so much better. Yeah? Thank you, kissy boys. You helping mama? Thank you. I love you too. Alright, I should actually start my day.